good morning you guys it's literally the same day but i had to change my sweatshirt because my son put food all over the blue one i was wearing and it was pretty disgusting so i didn't want to jump on camera and chat with you guys with a bunch of stains on my shirt i laid in bed this morning continued to read my book assistant to the villain this is by hannah nicole don't even know how to pronounce her last name so i'm not even going to attempt because i know i'm just going to butcher it but look how stunning this book is the pages on the side are red i love that that's the only reason i picked up this book because i saw that the sides were red and i was like oh my god that's gorgeous i need it and then i started reading it and realized how much i was actually enjoying it it's basically what the title suggests the main character is an assistant to the male main character who is a villain he's not really a villain i mean he technically he's labeled as the bad guy but he doesn't kill or hurt anyone that's innocent he hurts people who have hurt him or are just bad people in general and he's out for revenge i don't know exactly why he's out for revenge quite yet but i know that's his whole story like he is hungry for revenge and he will stop at nothing to get his revenge against the king of the land and then we have the sunshine assistant who is all sunshine rainbows and butterflies but she also has like a little evil streak to her and she understands the villain more than anyone else i love the two main characters i love their band to her and i've been reading this book with a smile on my face it's just good vibes i don't know how to explain it besides just very good vibes with this book and i'm having a ton of fun i need to get up and get ready for the day because i am a mess right now also we moved and my headboard is not officially up yet so our mattress is on the floor we need to really get to it honestly moving with a baby has been one of the hardest things i've ever done normally when we move we have everything set up and ready within 48 hours but it's been a week since we've moved and we still have not officially 100 percent settled into our new place we gotta do things little by little but with that being said despite me having a long list of things that i need to get done i wanted to film i haven't been uploading on youtube that much in march but i wanted to take today to do some fun things with you guys and also just do a little bit of self-care for me by doing all these fun bookish things i feel like my life has been very hectic go 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 these last couple weeks and i just want to take time today to decompress so today i thought well today and the next couple of days as well i thought it'd be fun to do some bookish things together i feel like i've said bookish things five times already in the span of two minutes but i want to spend time reading with you guys i also want to show you guys a massive book haul i went crazy buying books in the middle of the night the other day and i'm very excited about the books that i ordered they came in and they're all just so beautiful i did not realize i was buying such beautiful books in the moment because it was the middle of the night but i bought some really pretty books and i'm very excited to share them with you guys i also thought it would be fun to head to barnes and noble maybe i haven't been to a barnes and noble in maybe over two months now and i'm eager to go i'm itching to go to a bookstore check out what they have i did go crazy buying books a few nights ago so i don't think i'm gonna go crazy at barnes but maybe they have some books that will be new to me and they'll pick up but yeah we're just gonna have a chill day or next couple days doing fun book related stuff i've missed you guys i hope everyone's doing well i'm gonna go get ready now for the day i'll catch up with you guys in a minute book haul i'm so excited to share all the books that i recently bought with you guys i feel like i picked up a really good selection of books most of the books in this pile are pretty new releases within the last i want to say six months or so i do have one or two that are a little bit older but i've heard so many great things about all the books in this pile and all the covers in this pile are absolutely stunning i did not plan that whatsoever i literally was sitting in bed one night and decided that i wanted to order some books because it's been a while since i've actually bought books and i ended up putting a bunch of random books in my cart and when i got them i was like wait these are actually all really pretty first book that i want to share with you guys is one that you already saw at the beginning of this vlog uh, is assistant to the villain as i mentioned earlier i did start this book i'm about halfway done it follows a female main character who's an assistant to a male main character who's a villain well he's the kingdom's villain it is fantasy but it doesn't feel like i'm reading a fantasy book until the characters mention like special dragons or creatures or magical abilities and then i'm like oh wait you're right this is 
is a fantasy. It doesn't really read as a fantasy, at least to me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm really enjoying it so far. I love the two main characters. I feel like they have so much chemistry. I love their banter with one another. And I also like that you get the villain's POV in certain parts. This book is probably 95% the female main character's POV so far, but you do get a sprinkle of the villain's POV as well. And I really like that and appreciate it. Really loving this book so far. And like I said, absolutely gorgeous cover. I feel like the letters of the cover come out a little bit and then the red absolutely stunning then we have a fairly recent release i think this book actually came out this month but it's my dark desire by l j shen and parker as huntington look how gorgeous that cover is this is the sequel to my dark romeo which i read last year absolutely love that book i think it was almost a five star read for me and i still think about that book till today and i saw this one recently came out i honestly forgot that there was a sequel this one follows a different set of main characters characters but it's still set in the same world it follows one of romeo's best friends i think this one's gonna be like a cinderella retelling sort of thing which makes me very excited it goes i may be cinderella but zachary is not my prince charming the task was simple sneak into the most harvardly guarded manner steal back my pandit slip out problem number one america's most unattainable bachelor caught me problem number two he decided to keep me as to help zachary's son's winter may be the coldest i've ever felt but he makes my skin burn reserve calculate and savagely cruel he thrives on the weaknesses of others little does he know he just met his match he may be american royalty but this peasant will rise to become queen like doesn't that sound amazing i cannot wait to read it again the cover just chef's kiss absolutely stunning my dark romeo's cover is absolutely beautiful as well i actually read my dark romeo on kindle unlimited so i don't own the physical copy i need to rectify that and, and buy the physical copy so i can have these two side by side on my bookshelves because i think the covers are so gorgeous and i'm very very, very excited to read this book. Then we have Ride by Allie Hazelwood. I think I've read, I want to say 90% of her books and I've only actually enjoyed the love hypothesis from her. Every other book that I've read from her has really fallen flat. This book is going to finally help me make a decision to either stop reading Allie Hazelwood's books or to give her another chance. Because like I said, the first book that I've ever read from Allie was Love Hypothesis. Love it. It's one of my all-time favorite books, but every book since then from her has definitely felt meh to me but i decided to pick this one up and give her writing one last chance because this one is pretty different from anything else she's ever written this doesn't take place in the stem world and i also think it's ya paranormal romance or maybe just paranormal romance i don't know if this is ya or not it goes misery lark daughter of a powerful vampire councilman is an outcast her days of living anonymously among the humans are over she has been called upon to uphold an alliance between the vampires and their mortar enemies the wares. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha, low, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolutely authority but not without justice or feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every moment that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was. Misery has her own reasons to agree to his marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances, and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she is willing to do whatever it takes to give back what's hers. Oh. So I guess it's like a Romeo and Juliet type retelling? I'm kind of here for it. Let me know in the comments below if you read this book and what were your thoughts. And then I picked up Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This is the second book in the Divine Rivals series. I read Divine Rivals last month and actually I really enjoyed it. It did take me a hot second to actually get into the book. I feel like for the first half, I was pretty bored. I'm not going to lie. And then things started moving along in the second half and we got a lot more romance between the two main characters and I actually ended up really loving it. So I decided to pick up the sequel this one came out i think at the end of last year so it's still a fairly new release and i'm very excited to see what the two main characters get up to in this book it is a ya fantasy it involves a main character named iris who is a war correspondent she's in the front lines and there's a war going on between two gods but humans don't really know the truth about the war and what's actually going on iris is literally reporting on the war from the front lines so humans actually know what's going on and they're not sheltered from what's happening kind of enemies to lovers in a way but for a very brief moment enemies to lovers i think these two books are only a duology so this is the final book in the divine rivals world the first book ended on a cliffhanger so i'm eager to find out what's going to happen to the male main character if you know you know and then i picked up two books from the fantasy queen herself sarah j mass last year i read akatar well not last year 
two years now two years ago I read Akatar from her absolutely loved it and ever since I finished that series I haven't been able to find a fantasy series that comes close to those books for me I loved fourth wing but I still love Akatar more so I decided to go back to the Queen and check out her Crescent City series I think that's the name of the series I bought the first two books in the series I think there's three books in total the third one just came out and I was going to buy the third book on Amazon but it said that it was the international version and it confused me so I was like you know what let me just read the first two books and then I'll just go to Barnes and Noble and pick up the third book so I have Crescent City here then I have House of Sky and Breath do you guys see how thick these books are my husband started laughing when I unbox these he was like why are those books so huge and I'm like that Sarah J Mass for you I honestly have no idea what these books are about I know that they have gone viral on TikTok and everyone's talking about them but I honestly picked them up because it's Sarah J Maz and since I loved Akatar so much I was like let me check out some of her other books I haven't even read the synopsis so we're going to read it together Bryce had the perfect life working hard all day and partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friends leaving her bereft wounded and alone when the accused is behind bars but the crime start up again Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation she'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths Hunt is a notorious fallen angel now enslaved to the archangels he once attempted to overthrow his brutal skills and incredible strength have been set to one purpose to assassinate his boss enemies no questions asked but with a demon wrecking havoc in the city he's offered an irresistible deal help Bryce find the murderer and his freedom will be within reach as Bryce and Hunt dig deeper into Crescent City's underbelly they discover a dark power that threatens everything and everyone they hold dear and they find in each other a blazing passion one that could set them both free if they only let it look how stunning that is wow these books are so gorgeous i love the covers i actually bought these in hardcover because i noticed that the third book had just recently came out and was also hardcover so i was like i already know i'm going to be obsessed with this series and i might as well just pick up all three in hardcover and then they can look super cute together on my bookshelf so very excited and then obviously house of sky and breath is the second book in the series i'm not going to read the synopsis of that one because i haven't read the first book yet and i don't want to spoil it but then i picked up powerless by Lauren Roberts. I believe this is a YA fantasy. I guess I was in a fantasy mood when I ordered these books because the majority of these books are fantasy. This one is another very popular one that I've heard great things about and I love, love the cover. So gorgeous. It goes, the elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Payton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. But when she unwittingly saves one of I Maya's princess, Kai, she's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elite powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers what Peyton is. Completely ordinary. Hunted, hunter, destined for each other. He is the very thing she has spent her whole life pretending to be, and fate ensured they would fight each other. That sounds like it's going to be really good. The synopsis is reminding me of a particular book, and I can't figure out what book that was. Is it the Red Queen? It's giving me similar vibes. I don't know. And then, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book and I only purchased it because the cover is absolutely stunning and that is Gothicana I hope I'm pronouncing that right by Runix do you guys see this purple and do you see this cover absolutely gorgeous i literally added to car immediately when i saw this cover it is a dark romance look at this do you see this do you see that Stunning. I'm so excited to read this book and have it displayed on my bookshelf. But it goes, on outcast her entire life, Corvina is left adrift after losing her mother. When she receives the admission letter from the mysterious University of Varimore, she accepts it as a sign from the universe. The last thing she expects, though, is an old secluded castle on top of a mountain, riddled with secrets to see and death. Vad is an enigma and enjoys being a closed book. As a part-time professor working on his thesis, Vad has been around long enough to know the dangers the castle possesses. And he knows the moment his path crosses with Corvina that she's dangerous to everything that he is. They shouldn't have caught each other's eyes, they cannot be, but a show-inducing century-old mystery forces them to collide. People have disappeared every five years for more than a hundred years. Carvina is getting clues to unraveling it all, and that needs to keep an eye on her. And so begins a tale of the mysterious, the morbid, the macabre, and a deep love that blossoms in the unlikeliest of places. I did read some of the reviews, and a lot of people were saying that it's really spicy. I don't mind spice, but I'm hoping that the spice doesn't overpower the actual plot of the book, because I hate when authors do that but yeah those are all the books 
I'm so excited to read all of them. Obviously, I'll let you guys know my thoughts on these books. I'll probably be filming reading vlogs with all of these, and you guys will probably get my thoughts and opinions like while I'm reading. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of the books that I picked up. What were your thoughts? Have you bought any books recently? If so, what books have you bought? Let me know in the comments below. Let's have a bookish conversation in the comments. I'm literally sitting here and smiling as I read this book. It's so cute and I love the two main characters. I've said this already, but I just love their banter with one another and their chemistry is just 10 out of 10. I also really love the side characters. They're so fun. Kingsley the frog, adorable. Like I really want to know his backstory and I need to know how he became a frog and why he's in Tristan's possession. I think this is going to be a five-star read from you guys. I'm just enjoying it so much. I will say that it's very slow burn. I I have maybe a little over 100 pages left and neither of the two main characters have really acknowledged what they feel for one another but I'm kind of here for it because it feels more realistic and it feels more genuine. I hate 95% of the slow burns that I read but this one is just doing it for me and like I said it just feels a lot more realistic the way their relationship is actually progressing and I'm enjoying it. same exact spot I was in last night when I was giving you guys a little book update. Also, if you hear a shushing noise, my baby is taking a nap in the other room, so you might hear his little sound machine. But I just finished Assistant to the Villain, and honestly, I am going to give this book a five-star rating. I loved it. It ended in a cliffhanger, which kind of annoyed me because I didn't know that this was actually a three-book series. I guess the second book is coming out this fall. I don't know why, but I just thought this was a standalone maybe because i haven't heard a lot of people talk about it or i've just i don't know i haven't been in the loop but i guess this is going to be a three book series second one's coming out this fall and i should have known better because it's a fantasy book and normally it's very rare at least it's been rare to me to find a standalone fantasy book and the slow burn makes so much more sense now that i know that this is actually going to be part of a series i just hate starting series that are not finished you know what i mean like i hate having to wait for a book especially like this one i love this so much i wish i could just go to barnes and noble right now and pick up the second book but i can't because it's not out yet that's so annoying aside from that minor inconvenience i 100 percent recommend this book there is a trigger warning at the very beginning i guess i'll tell you the trigger warning in case you don't want to look it up but death of a sibling and backstory child abandonment and sexual assault and backstory all discussed in the novel so readers who may be sensitive to these elements please take note proceed with caution um, even though those are some very deep topics that are talked about or referred to in the book it's not in your face i've read a lot of books where there's like a dark element to it and it's very dark and the trigger warnings are warranted with assistance to the villain i don't feel like the topics are discussed a lot and they're not thrown in your face constantly it is a very light-hearted romantic comedy fantasy type of book definitely recommend i love the two main characters i've said it already i love the side characters i hope that the side characters make more appearances in the second and third book i also already see some characters that would be perfect for a spin-off series if the author wants to go that way yeah, i really enjoyed it i highly recommend i really did not expect for me to enjoy this book as much as i did but we are i give it five stars i can't remember the last book i gave five stars to it's been a hot minute so highly highly recommend definitely go check out assistant to the villain my baby is still asleep which is a miracle in itself so i think i'm going to take the time now to update my reading journal i have been updated my reading journal all month i've really been slacking on it and before i start a new book i do want to take the time to update my reading journal i like having a reading journal this is the first year that i'm actually keeping one but i've also found it hard to actually keep track of it and update it but i'm gonna do that now at the end of the year i want to see all my books in one place and see all the books that i read obviously i have bookshelves 
so I can see the books that I read. But I don't know, something about keeping a digital reading journal just is a vibe and it hits. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm gonna update that right now is what I'm trying to get at. So this is my little reading journal that I've been using since, I wanna say January. And I got it off Etsy. It keeps track of all my reading and it's super organized. But like I said, I have been slacking on updating it, but doesn't it look so cute once it's actually updated? I also just cleaned my screen. It's wet and it's acting a fool. But see, I haven't <laughs> been doing a good job of updating my reading progress. So I'm going to sit here, eat a little snack, update this and wait for my baby to wake up. He's taking a nap with his dad. So I'm literally just sitting here waiting for both my husband and my baby to wake up. Let me start updating this journal and that's literally when my baby's gonna wake up. It never fails. But let's see how far I get. I just got to part two of Ruthless Vows. I decided to start this one next after I finished Assistant to the Villain, just because I still have Divine Rivals like fresh in my mind. And I wanted to finish the duology before I move on to any other series or continue any other series. Like I said, I just got to part two of the book and the same experience that I had while reading Divine Rivals is happening again, meaning I'm a little bit bored with the pace of the book. And trust me, I understand that not every page not every chapter is going to be fast-paced is going to be full of action but I find that with Divine Rivals and Ruth's Vows I've struggled to get through the first half of the book just because it's so slow moving and it's setting up I guess the climax of the book which I understand and I appreciate and I can respect but at the same time I'm not gonna lie it's making me a little bored but it's so weird because i love the writing i love how rebecca's writing makes it feel like you're reading a fairy tale and it makes it feel so magical and like you're in the story with the characters but, but at the same time not much has happened yet i don't know i feel like the book is moving at a snail pace and this is definitely going to be a book that i'm not going to be able to finish in one sitting or within 24 hours or anything this book is definitely going to take me a bit to get through because of that i think i'm actually going to end off the vlog here because i do want to upload this vlog for you as soon as possible since i haven't been uploading that much in march i miss you guys i didn't get to go to barnes and noble in this vlog i think i'm gonna go this weekend and just film a separate bookstore vlog for you guys i haven't had a chance to go to barnes with the move and organizing everything i also want to film a video organizing my bookshelves again since we moved i decided to create a cute little reading nook in our bedroom with my bookshelves i need to find a cute little reading chair that's affordable i've started looking at different reading chairs and they're all like 500 600 even a thousand dollars i don't want to pay that much for a chair especially since we're not in our forever home yet i feel like i'll be willing to pay that much for a chair when we're in our forever home and i know that the reading nook that i'm going to create is going to be for a very long time versus this is just an apartment we're leasing and i don't want to go crazy with a chair that might not fit in our next place or maybe even go with the vibe in our next place so if you have any suggestions of where i can find like an affordable reading chair that's cute and comfortable but not massive and not expensive let me know in the comments below i did find a cute one on walmart i think i'll include a screenshot here i might buy that one after i do some more measurements and amazon had some cute ones but i don't know buying a chair on amazon makes me feel a little weird i don't feel like it's going to be comfortable it's also so hard to buy a chair not being able to sit in it first to make sure that it's comfy but if you guys know where i can find a cozy reading chair that's 300 and under, I feel like that would be a good budget. Let me know. It's a quick little preview. I have three bookshelves in my bedroom right now. I have these two. Books are all over the place. Honestly, my son did that. I had all of the books in the bookshelf and he came over and took them all out. And then I have another bookshelf in my room. So I have three bookshelves. I'm actually going to move this bookshelf next to these two, but I have to remove my son's crib. We're actually going to break it down since we're co-sleeping and we're not in a rush to make him sleep in his crib. So then and I'm going to move these two bookshelves over here. We have like this whole wall space in our room. I can even buy more bookshelves if I wanted to, which is really nice. But I'm going to move these two over here. Don't mind the mess, honestly. <laughs> we moved, okay, you guys? And we're still settling in. But 
We're going to move these two bookshelves over here, add this bookshelf to these two. Since I'm moving these to the right, I'm going to buy a chair that can go right here and then probably add some shelving and some decor pieces so the wall is in plain. It's really nice because it's right next to a window so I get a ton of natural light while I read. And at night, it's going to be super cozy with my red light. So yeah, that's a quick little preview. I'm definitely going to be filming a video where I put my reading nook corner together. Definitely keep an eye out for that. My husband has to finish putting our bed together. It's been working nonstop, so he hasn't had a chance, but he promised me that tomorrow he'll put it together and break down the crib, get it out the way, and then I can finally start on my reading corner, which I'm very excited about. I've never had a reading corner before. With that being said, I'm going to end off the vlog here. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. I've missed you guys. I will be uploading a ton of content in April, I promise, as soon as we finish settling in. I'm so excited to be filming in this new space with so much natural lighting I just already feel the difference and I can't wait to create content for you guys so definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed already and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys mm -hmm.